So let's let's start off by I'm going to explain to you like the brief. This is a client that I've I've, I've worked with for some time now. Um, the company's name is Latex System. What basically they do is they sell computer accessories like laptops, laptop screen, laptop chargers. They fix laptops. So if you have a laptop, and I probably yes you do have a laptop, you are familiar with that. So they target students. Their target audience are students or on university campuses, universities, colleges. So they approached me and they said they wanted kind of a billboard that they want to put in front of their office, like on the, on the side of their office building to attract students. So this was the concept that I proposed to them. Uh, if you look into the project first, you see that I've read a, a copy. That is the copy for the design. It's pretty simple, like laptop service center, repair all laptop faults, having issues with your laptop. This was the information that they gave me. But straight up, let me give you one tip here. The tip here is that when a client gives you a brief, like a content like this to design with, you have to make sure that you will ask questions for clarity. And apart from that, after you've received a content like this, make sure that you highlight the most important words because you, you have to make sure that you create hierarchy. So looking at this content, laptop service center, repair laptop fault, having issues with your laptop. So I believe these three should be the heading to have a lot of visual emphasis so this should be the h2 the heading 2 it should have also a little bit of visual emphasis and this are uh, some of the services they provide so you have to kind of identify which details or which detail in the brief that a client gives you is most important and this is their location so we are going to work with these details here so what i did is that what i normally do whenever i'm designing uh, and I wanted to do the same. Whenever I'm designing, I first of all try to understand the brief. So after understanding the brief, what is important, which words are important, I, tr I try to understand the company, I try to understand their target audience. So after understanding all these, I look for visual reference. What is visual reference or visual inspiration? Visual reference is trying to understand the company, understanding the brand, understanding the personality of the brand you are designing for, you will have kind of a look and feel you want to go after. So by understanding the, the brand in this project, I get some visual reference and out of the ones I chose, I uh, it was these two images that caught my attention. The first one is this particular image that really caught my attention. You can see this design has a lot of humor to it. So my attention, so this was First of all, my visual inspiration. And another one is this. So if you look at this image, you can see that part of the layout of my final design, I, I chose it from this very image. I like how the shape has been slanted to give the design some sort of energy. Always, before you start your design, try to understand the look and the feel of your design. Then, after you have understood the look and feel you want to go after, do you want your design to, to feel fun? Do you want it to be professional? Do you want it to look premium? With that, you can look for visual reference and inspiration of designs that has the same look and feel. And you can use similar shapes, similar fonts, and sometimes even similar color palettes if need be. But with this, what I picked from this inspiration particularly is the use of humor and also the cleanliness of the design and also the use of this shape here that gives the design some sort of energy. The next thing you're going to do is, with all these things in mind, after looking for the visual reference, with this particular project, personally, I didn't create any sketch for this. I didn't do any sketch for this particular project. I started off, but I knew exactly the direction I want to go. I have other courses that shows you how to do sketch and other stuff. I will leave a link below. But with this particular project, out of the visual reference, I just showed you they're going to create a design. Stay tuned for that. In this very lecture, I'm, we're going to look at creating the documents for our design in Photoshop. Let's dive right into Photoshop. And this is not a Photoshop beginner course. If you are new to Photoshop, I have a course on getting started in graphic design, which I introduce you to Photoshop. So I'll leave a link below. So with that said, you launch Photoshop, and once you have Photoshop launch, you go to File, New, shortcut key for that is Control or Command N. So with the new document dialog box open, 
I'm going to choose the size and this is a print project. This is a billboard. So that to tell you that it's going to be huge. So the measurements is in inches. So the weight is 320 inches and the height is 200 inches. And in order not to make this document very big, I'm going to use resolution set to 30. Later on, when we are ready to prepare our work for prints, we will can I will, I will show you how to change it back to 100 or 200 or 300 DPI for prints. So for now, I'm just going to change it to 30 just to reduce the file size and check at boards and give it a name, name it billboard. So once you've done all these, you can click on create. All right, so this is our new document, right? Now in my Photoshop, I have some panels here, which I don't like. If your Photoshop panel looks like this, you can follow me here. I'm going to close all this panel by clicking on this and choosing close tab group. Click on this and choose close tab group. So now we don't also need the properties panel. So this, I might need it, so I'll just drag it here. And adjustments, I don't need it. So click on this and choose close tab, tab group. So you can just follow this and control your panels as how you want it to be. In the layers panel to my thumbnail is a little bit bigger. So I like it if you, if you right click on in the thumbnail with your mouse, you can choose whether medium, large, or small thumbnail. I like it to be a little bit smaller. All right. That is all for creating of our new document. I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at bringing in our text in our document. So to bring in the text, I've prepared in the project files, I have link below in the project files, I've prepared the text. That's the copy for the ad. I'm going to bring it in. And there are several ways of bringing it in. We can bring it in one after the other because Photoshop works based on layers. So you can bring it in one after the other. You can also bring it in, just copy everything. And when you move it to Photoshop, you separate the, the text for each text to be on its own independent layer. So just drag around this and press Control C to copy or facing the mark Command C. I would like to mention that this particular class is not an absolute beginner course. So if you are an absolute beginner, I would like you to check my other courses, which will help you. So I've copied all the text. In Photoshop, select the type two, like you can press T key for type two, that's the horizontal type two. And I'm going to make a selection, just click and drag, make a selection around this and press Control V to paste. Now I've pasted this text, but I don't see it. And with the customizing of the text, it's not too difficult. But if you are new to this, check out my basics to Photoshop course. I'll put a link below. What I'm going to do is in the tools options bar, I'll hover over the T, T here, the T, and I'll just push it like to the right, just drag to the right with your mouse. It's going to increase the font size. You can see that it's increasing the font size. And I can see that I have some dummy text which has been added to this. So I'm going to select it and delete this. Press Control plus to zoom in to see this better. Now that we have our text in, because of the way we brought it in, we have everything on in one, on one layer, which is not what you want. We want to separate the text so that we can actually design, create the visual flow we want in our design. So to solve this issue, select back the type two, drag around the laptop service center, use control X to cut, select the move to, select the type two again, click in the canvas. You can see that in the layers panel here, it has created a new layer. Then press control V to paste. So that's the same way, select the type two, select this drag around this control X to cut move to type to click outside control V to paste. So I'm going to use the same process to separate this so that I have every text on its own independent layer. I'm not going to say it again, but you see me do it. If you didn't get a first two, just pause the video and take a look at how I did it.
So what I'm doing here is I'm still separating the individual text. Look here in the layers panel, I have a lot of layers here. Why, why am I doing this? I'm doing this so that I can independently control the individual layers when I start laying out my page. So continue with that with the type to click. Control V to paste. We have all the text on its own independent layer, which is very good. Before we move any further, I want you to save your work by going to File, Save As, and just give it a location. I'm going to save it on my desktop, and I'm going to name it Billboard. Make sure you are saving it as a PSD, and click on Save. If this dialog box pop up, just click on OK. All right, so that is all for bringing in our text. I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at choosing color palettes from logo. So let's dive in. In our working documents, what I want you to do is make sure you have the project files. There's a link below. And in the project files, I have the company's logo right in the project files. This is the logo. It is an illustrator file, but you can bring it into Photoshop. So just drag this and put it into the working document. And it's going to take some time. It depends on the, this is the pop-up. Do I want to open this as a smart object? I'll say yes, and I'll click OK. I have the transform controls here, which I'm going to use this to increase the size. Now, if you are using an earlier version of Photoshop, you have to hold the Shift key whilst you are resizing this to constrain to the proportion. But if you are using Photoshop 2018, 2019, 2020, you don't have to hold the Shift key. So with this, I have the logo in. Our goal here is to sample colors from the logo. So to do that, use the shape tool, right click, select the rectangle tool, then just draw a perfect rectangle. Hold the shift key to draw a rectangle, one, and duplicate it. Hold the alt key or option key, then just duplicate it. Select the first one, double click in this square thumbnail. That will bring out the color picker dialog box and sample this color. Select the second shape at the rectangle and sample the second color. I'm going to zoom in with Control Plus and use the space bar key to pan around. And I'll sample the second color. So zoom back. So now, these are the two colors that we're going to use for our design. That is all for like, choosing color palettes from the logo. I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at creating hierarchy in text, proximity, and visual flow. Let's start. With our documents in progress, I'm going to press Control Plus to zoom in. How do we create hierarchy in this text? So the question we have to ask ourselves is which of these text is most important to the target audience? So we want the laptop service center to stand out. So to make this stand out, you just select the laptop service center, show transform control, and just increase the size of this text. Yes. The reason why I don't encourage you, I will not encourage you to use the type tool and to increase this, the, the size from here is because the document is very large. So we need to use the short home control. Now, before we do this, I think it will be advisable to, to make sure that we have the right font installed. And looking at the brand, the brand font is a Google font called Obitron. And this, I have the fonts in the projects files. So I have named it, I've named the file fonts. So if you're using a Mac, you can just use this link, this link to download the fonts, copy and paste it in your browser to download the fonts. If you're using a Windows machine, you can just drag your mouse around it, right click and choose install the fonts and the fonts will be installed. 
So once the font is installed, first of all, let's make sure that every text here is a brand font. So we're going to use the layers panel, hold the shift key, and I'm going to select every text here and make sure I have the character panel open. So window character in this search bar, I'm going to search for the fonts. So the fonts, Obitron, I've selected it. I'm going to select Obitron bold. All right. So all the fonts has been changed. So now we can move forward to, to make sure we create the hierarchy and make sure we have the right proximity in the placement of the text. So making sure we have the laptop service center selected, bring out a cutter panel and make sure we have all caps turned on, make sure all is all caps. Then use the arrows to minimize the size of the, the font. Press enter to confirm, to commit transformation. I'm, I'm just placing this at a proper place. You can use the move tool to do that. Then the next thing is we have to bring a repair all laptop faults, bringing that here. So, show transform control and click once to activate transform controls and just increase the size of this. Now, I want to mention here that there's a reason why I'm not giving you an exact amount like value that makes sure that the this is the, the size of this font is thousand so so and so. I'm doing this because the most important part about this class is not to show you how to do exactly that but to give you the process the mindset it takes to create this kind of design so with this just put it in the middle select this one i also make this all caps then put it right in the middle of this what i'm going to do i'm going to make it a little bit bigger now how did i know how, how do i know how big this should be the key word here is contrast contrast in size so we have to make sure that this font the laptop service center is very big and we repair our laptop for fault there is a difference that's the difference in size so this looks okay for me then the next part about this is we have to make sure that we have the proper alignment and proper proximity of the text. So all this sales of laptop, repair of laptop, and the sales of accessories, they all are under one group. Like, what do I mean? Anytime you're designing, you have to make sure that certain elements, the designs, which are alike, are grouped, so that it makes it easy for the audience to easily scan and understand your design. So the sales of laptop, the repairs of laptop and the sales of computer accessories are all under the services they provide. Even home repairs, all of these are under the services they provide. So at this point, all that I'm doing is I'm just trying to group this so that I know that the location too, I have to make sure that it's grouped. So I put the location here. This is the location, pens block A. I'll put this here and this is the Instagram. I also put this here and there's a contact i'll put that here and this should be the headline another level of headline that we are supposed to work with so i'm also going to put this here i'll select the sub headline and put that here so now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to make this very font a little bit bigger by using the show from control, clicking here and increasing the size of this. And let's turn it into all caps. Then drag around this, control X to cut. Select the move tool, put it here, 
I'm going to put this down here. Select this, hold the Alt key and drag to duplicate the text and just press the T key to activate the type tool and just replace this with Control A to select it and Control V to paste just to replace the text. Then with what is left, we put this here. Now, at this point, I feel this should be a different font just for contrast. So I'm going to use Avena. I will leave the font Avena in the resources folder so you can just install that. So just Avena Roman. And I'm going to indent it at this side and select Control E to select everything, then align that to the left. Put that here. So all we are doing is you're creating a proper alignment and a proper flow and proximity of our design. So at this point, that is all for like creating hierarchy in text and proximity and the visual flow of the whole text. I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to look at adding logo elements to text in a headline. So what do I mean? Let's move back into our design. So in Photoshop, this is our design and this is the logo. If I zoom into the logo, I see an opportunity here. What opportunity do I see? I see an opportunity for us to use this particular element in our design just to create that kind of consistency. By looking at the logo, we have this visual element here, which we can use, we can use to create that kind of competition. That's rhythm. Remember, one of the principles of design is a good rhythm. And even in music, rhythm makes music suiting and suiting to listen to. So in design, we can use rhythm. I'm going to repeat this element here. So to create that, just use the rectangle to select the rectangle to make sure that this, this is set to shape and the color is set to fill and create a simple rectangle. I'm not going to give you an exact weight of the rectangle. I just want you to create a rectangle that looks like this and come to the shape panel and select an ellipse tool. Draw an ellipse, make sure you hold the shift key. An ellipse that looks like this. But with the ellipse, what I want you to do is once you've drawn the ellipse, click here, make sure that the fill is set to none. And if you don't have the properties panel open after you've drawn the ellipse, make sure you go to window and you select properties. So with this, you make sure this, the fill is set to none and the stroke is set to black and you can increase the stroke by using this. You get it. So this is how you increase the stroke. I'm going to make it 30. So I want you to play with it, but make sure that it looks like the one in the logo. And make sure that the weight is the same. So I'm going to zoom in with Control Plus. And I want you to follow me closely. This is 34. My goal here is to make sure that the weight of this is the same. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it looks the same as the weight of this rectangle here. As the weight of the stroke of the ellipse is the same. So right now, let me just go back and look at the logo and you can see that it looks similar. So what I'm going to do is zoom out. Just push this to the edge. Use Control R, Control R to turn on the rulers, Control R to turn on the rulers and with the rulers, click on the ruler and drag to make sure that it aligns to the edge. Because our goal here is to make sure that this shape aligns to the edge of this text. That is our goal here. Once you make sure that the shape aligns to the edge of this, the text, you, you go to the Tools panel, you right-click on the Path Selection tool, 
to bring out the option then you select the direct selection tool with that just drag around this and once you've done that it's going to select you drag around the edge of this it's going to select the anchor point of this shape and you hold the shift key and you drag it forward like i'm doing here but before we do that i think it's very important that you make sure select the we repair all laptop faults and make sure it's all of them is center aligned so i'm going to press ctrl a to make sure that i have the art board selected and i'm going to center align that with this make sure i click on this to center align just in case you make a mistake you just press ctrl z to undo so with that done let's select this very shape the two shapes we've created Control G to group. And I'm going to rename it logo reference. Then hold the Alt key. So before I duplicate it, this is what I felt. I felt it's too long. So I'm going to select the dash lesson two again and drag around this end. Hold the shift key, push it back a bit. So with this done, I'm going to select the repair all laptop faults use the show trump control and increase the size of this control a to select all and click on the center align to make sure everything is center aligned so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this just hold the alt key and make sure you select a group and you duplicate this and once you have it duplicated you press Ctrl T to activate the channel control, right click and choose flip horizontal. And once you are done with that, that is, I think that is all for adding the logo element to text in the head headline. I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, you're going to look at creating shape in our design for strong flow. So what do I mean by this? So looking at our design, you can see that there is no shape there's no flow here so first of i'm going to bring in the visual reference that i i spoke to you about that this design inspired me so just this is what i normally do when i'm designing i just bring out the this visual reference so looking at this visual reference i just brought in i have it in a project file so check that out and you can bring it in if you're following me so with this visual reference one thing i like about this is this shape here so I'm, we're going to use the same shape kind of to determine the flow of our design so by selecting the rectangle tool just draw a rectangle like this and i'm going to make it a little bit bigger and in the layer stack, you see Photoshop works based on layers. So just bring it to the, make sure that is the last layer, drag this in front. So with this, double click in this square thumbnail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to this. Just for contrast, I want to see the text. So the way we are going to fix this is we are going to draw shapes in, in, in this. So select, the rectangle tool again and draw another shape or just like this you get it and once you've you have the shape make sure you use the direct selection tool select this anchor point and put it push it forward make sure you hold the shift key push it forward it's going to show show you this dialog box click on don't show again and yes can also select this and push it back a bit so that we, we can have this slanted shape over here right here and again make sure that is the last layer and 
for the purpose of this class, I'm going to select the same color, but instead change this color to like a light gray. Change it to a light gray. So this is how you do that. Now, my goal here is to work, make sure this billboard has at least a lot of at least three image or three layout points. So how do I do that? I can fix that by simply drawing another rectangle, which will be here. Draw another rectangle and changing the color. It can be any color for now. And using the direct selection tool, make sure that you can move this here. Make sure I go my goal here is to make sure is to make sure that the shape is aligned to the the angle of this shape. So with the direct selection tool selected. Select this shape, this pointer, and move it here. Select this, and just push it here. Just Control Plus to zoom in. Give dash version two again. Select this and push it here. Select this and push it here. So all that I'm doing is I'm using the dash selection tool to select this anchor point. And I'm using this to create a custom shape I want. All right. So the next is I'm going to, I, I think I'll need another shape here. I'll need to put an image here, but with that image, it looks a little bit tall, but for now, we are going to leave it as it is now. So the next visual flow we want to create is, we want to make sure that the footer, the, 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 the core, the contact also has kind of a unique layout shape. So before we can determine that, let's bring in the contact. Since that is very important, let's make it a little bit bigger by using the transform control, make it a little bit bigger. And with this, With this, I'm going to use a rectangle tool, draw a rectangle like this, and make sure that is the last in the layer stack. Double click in the, rect rect in the square thumbnail to bring out the color picker dialog box and select this color that we sample from the logo to make sure that we have this color. So now this is it. This is this shape right here. Now, the next part of this is very critical. Let me just increase the size of this with the transform control. And I'm going to control the, the tracking of this font. So make sure they have the crater panel open and You come here and you select minus 25. I'm going to change the color of this to white. So by pressing the T key, you activate the type two, and this will bring out the type two options bar. Click on this to bring out the color picker dialog box, and I'm going to sample white and click OK. All right. So with this done, what 
next to do is you can see in the final design that we have this nice shape that i created here i'm going to show you how i did that shape it's pretty much simple what i did was i selected i used the rounded rectangle tool i drew a rounded rectangle like this you get it so you draw another rectangle like this and all you have to do is just change the color of this rounded rectangle to double click here sample this color and make sure that you have the properties shape properties dialog box open if you don't see this go to window properties and make sure that you have your shape properties dialog box open and make sure that you have this turn off then we am going to increase the size of this to 400 so that gives us that curved shapes that curved shaped so i'm going to increase it more to like 800 so it further increases the shape so that is how i got that unique shape that you see in the final design right so now what is next to do is i'm going to kind of add an extra shape just to give it some sort of visual interest and i just did it to add to the flow of the design so how did i do that to do doing that is a little bit tricky to create that kind of shape you saw in the final design it's a little bit tricky so i want to pay attention so with this rounded rectangle created i'm going to name this rounded rectangle rounded one and duplicate it with ctrl j to duplicate as you press ctrl or command j it's going to duplicate the shape then what we want to do is to change the beneath shape we're going to change the color of this to this color here if you don't see you don't see this color just sample it from the colors we sampled here and select the top rounded so now we have rounded one copy and rounded one so let me just make this rounded two and rounded one select rounded two and just push it up a bit now I, i'm seeing here that this is not our goal our goal here is to create that kind of we want this to be an empty space we want this to be white and so we have to duplicate this shape again Control j to duplicate and i'm going to name this three so now this we have one two three one two three so we have three shape that we started working with so we have the top shape which is white we have the middle shape which is white and we have the down shape which is this blue color instead of the down shape the middle shape should be blue so we can just double double click in a square thumbnail and change this to the blue and instead change this to white so what this means is that if we select the top the, the third round rectangle and push it up you can see what is happening it's giving us that effect we want if you didn't get me at this point just go back and create a rectangle and follow me just pause and do as i do and i'm pretty sure you'll be able to achieve this effect all right you can let me know in the comments if you didn't get it i'll just make a tutorial just for you but if you follow it you should be able to get it so once you do that the next thing left is just to nudge in the shape to make sure you can push it forward and upward to see to get a the look you want but i think this is quite good for me right now so that is all for this section that's creating the shapes in our design for the strong flow we want the design to have i'll see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to look at adding images to our composition to our design so let's right, dive right into our working design so this is where we are and in the project files i have prepared the images you're going to use i have a few tips for you here anytime you're doing a design anytime you're doing a design and you want to select images make sure that your image your, the image you use for the design like the photo you use for your design is related to the design and secondly don't choose generic images like images that don't have a point of focus looking at this image for example 
the action in the image you want to tell a story make sure your images your the, the image you choose for your design tells a story not just any generic image image and also your target audience will relate with the image you choose for your design so first of first of we're going to select this image so i'm going to just open this image in photoshop So in a project files, you see that I have the image like this image here. Just make sure you drag it into Photoshop. And before I'm going to put this image, so I'm going to select this shape. And before I, I bring in the image, I have to make sure that shape is selected so that it comes on top of that shape. So with this done, I'm just going to increase the size of this. Just increase the size like this. Click here to com commit transformation. Then I'll just create a clipping mask. The shortcut key is Control Alt G to create a clipping mask. And once the clipping mask has been created, now I realize that this has to go and this has to come. Talking about the shape, the shape we created for this, select this rectangle shape beneath it and push it here. You need to make sure that this image is showing enough. And I think at this point, I'm going to select the direct selection tool and I'll make a selection around this and just use the Alt Shift key With this done, I'm going to increase the size of this image a bit so that it fits properly into this frame. And anytime you're putting an image in a design like this, make sure that you only show the point of focus, the most important part of the image. So once that is done, let's bring the second image in. So the second image is, first of all, I have to make sure that before I bring the second image in, I, I want us to do something. Let's group this the headline here. I'm going to select all these elements. And I think I'm going to select this too. With a shift key, hold a shift key and click on this to select it. Let's control G to group. And I'm going to name it headline. And once it's done, check show transform control and Click on the anchor handles and make sure that you minimize it a bit. So right, right now, once this is done, I'm going to minimize it a little bit more. Once this is done, what I want you to do is let's draw another shape. But this time around, like instead of drawing a shape, select the pen tool. Just press P for pen tool. And make sure that your pen tool selected. Make sure the option is set to shape. And you have fill set. You get the stroke is set to none. And we're going to draw a, a shape from here to here. You can zoom in to make sure that the shape falls on the line. So from here to here. So even if it doesn't fall on the line at the first, you can just later on use the direct selection tool to just align it properly. So over here, now that I've, I have the shape, I'll just zoom in and make sure everything is aligned. If everything is not aligned, I'll select in the tools panel, select direct selection tool and move it here. So with the direct selection tool, I have been able to put it on 
the line. Make sure it's, everything is aligned. And once we have this, this is where we will bring in our shape. Make sure it is inside our working documents. And we're going to bring in our picture. This is where we bring in our picture. So this is the picture I want to use. So with this picture, we just drag it and we put it in our working document. Increase the size of it. And I want to show you one technique here. You see, anytime you're putting a picture in a design, you have to look at the flow of the picture. Most of times, work with the flow of your image and the flow of your design. Now, this lady here is facing on the opposite side. So we want to flip it so that she face here. So how do we do it? We just press Control T to activate the travel control and right click and choose flip horizontal. So flip horizontal and press enter. So once we've done, you press enter, press Control Alt G to kind of create a clipping mask. So it clips this image. So make sure that the image is clipped. So now that the image is clipped, we've brought in our image. So first off, I, I just want to make sure that this all this text is in front of this so that it doesn't hide. I don't want this text to be hidden first off. So the next thing we're going to do is to bring in the image of the other services and I, looking for a place to put it was a little bit of a challenge. So what I, I want us to do is we just want to put that here. Let's put that here. But before that, quickly, let's fix this. I'm going to select this, use the transform control and make it big and the size of this is, I'm going to make it 780 and the size of this should be the same 780. And I'm going to align this to the left. I'm going to align this to this side. Now, just for contrast, to make sure this is visible, I'm going to draw a shape, which is a rectangle shape, and just beneath it. And this is a very good opportunity to create some visual interest here. So with this shape, put make sure it's beneath the text, and double click here to change the color to this and after that select the text press the t key to activate the type two then click here to activate the color picker select this so right now the text should be white this also should be white so let's change the color of this to white now once we have this done let me just push this up a little bit and i what i see an opportunity here i'm going to zoom in this is an, an opportunity for us to make the the edge of this slanted so that it kind of it has the same rhythm the design has the same rhythm so to to achieve this all we can we have to do is select the dash lesson tool and just select this and just push it forward make sure you hold the shift key and just to make sure everything is well aligned, just push it back a bit and just align it to the edge of this. After aligning it, you can just push it back. And with that, you know that everything is very well aligned. Right now, what is left is you push this here. Now the font of this is, the typeface of this is Avena, just for contrast. So I'm going to increase this a bit with the show from control, then, Make sure you click on the edge to activate the transform control and just increase it a little bit. Now, once this is done, press the T key to activate the type two, then select, click here to act, activate the color picker dialog box and want this to be white. All right. So let's move back to adding the images. So to add the other images, 
all we have to do is to draw another rectangle like this. So I'm not giving you any size because my goal here is kind of to give an idea of how to do this, not to do this exactly. So once you've drew the rectangle, we want to give it that same flow. So just press Control T to activate the transform control. Right click and choose perspective and just let's move it here. And I, I, I am now realizing that with the design I created, the shape was not, was not aligning like this. So make sure it has the same flow. The design has the same flow. So one of, one of the principles of good design is it has a good rhythm. So you always want to make sure that your design has that rhythm to it. So with the perspective again, I'm just making sure my design has the same flow. And with this done, I'll just decrease the size a little bit and duplicate it three times. Why? Because I want, I want to put some images in here to represent the other, the other services they render, which is less important. It's important, but we can't obviously make everything like show here. So we have to kind of create some level of hierarchy in our images. So we're going to bring one image here. So in the project files, in the project files, I want you to locate this image, like the laptop hinge repair, and drop it in. Obviously, it's going to become very small, so you have to increase the size. And once that is done, press Enter. Control Alt J to create a clipping mask. And once this is done, you select the second shape. Let's look at the second image. We're going to look at the screen repairs. So we're going to look at this, the screen, the crack screen, put that here, put that in front of this shape, increase the size of this, press enter to commit transformation, control alt J. And the reason why it's working right now is because I have it in front of the shape. So to make it easier, let's just group this. This is laptop hinge, select the image and the shape, control J to group, and just name it hinge and select the crash screen and the shape beneath it, control G to group and name it screen. So now we have this last shape here. In the project files, I have another shape, which is the keyboard. If you have, if you have a keyboard problem, so we just bring the image in, the keyboard image in, put it here, increase the size of this, Press enter to commit transformation, control alt J and let's group this. Let's group it and name this, double click on the, the name. Make sure you have the name targeted and name it keyboard. All right. So once this is done, we are done bringing our image in. One last thing, just as a bonus, let's add a stroke to this group. So I'm going to select this hinge group and come to FX stroke and the, the layer style dialog box will open. And obviously we want to give this a white stroke just to make it stand out and increase the stroke to, at this point, I'm going to use my eye, increase it to 15. And I'm going to hold the Alt key, drag it on top, hold the Alt key and drag it just to duplicate it. So hold the Alt key and drag the FX and duplicate it on the other shapes. So guys, that is all for this section that is adding images to our composition. I'll see you in the next lecture. This lecture, we're going to look at adding logos to our working design. So back into Photoshop, this is where we've got into it and pretty much we should have added some the logo of the company. So we're going to do that now. To add the logo of the company, I have that here. If you don't have that, just go back and see how I brought that here. And I'm going to hold the alt key and just put that on top here. And I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'll just push it, make it a little bit bigger. Now, first off, let me make sure that I have this group. I grouped, did I group this? 
I must have grouped this. So I don't have it grouped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it back and make sure I have. So what I'm supposed to do is put this text into this group. I grouped it before, but it didn't work. So select these two texts. I'm going to select it. Yours, yours might be different. So just follow along and get an idea and just do exactly as you see. So I'm going to minimize this a bit and put the logo here. So one of the things I want to do is I have to make sure that the logo is center aligned with the headline. So I'm going to select the logo and the headline and make sure I click on this to make sure they are center aligned. So what is left, I'm going to have to bring in the I have to bring in the company that uh, the laptop company logo because the client specifically said he wants to just for I'm going to have to make sure I select this to create some room here. I'm going to select these and I'll put them on top of the layer stack. Just so just put, put that here to create this space for us to add the logos. So to add the logos, all we have to do is just go into the project files. And I'm going to select all the logos. Select this, select this, select this. Uh, I have all the logos prepared, by the way. I'm going to select all the logos so that I can bring them in one at a like all at once. So select all of them. And I will just push that here. So to tell me to just confirm transformation, so I'm going to press enter key several times. So with all of them in, um, I have to make sure all of them is selected by holding the shift key and just clicking on all of them. Now I found out from the clients which brands of laptops they service the most. So I'm going to arrange them based on which of the brands that they service the most. So from the clients, let me just increase this a bit. From the clients, the first brand is HP that they, they service the most. So it's HP. These are small, so you have to make sure you increase the size of this with a transform control. So Lenovo, I'm going to bring Asa. And one key tip here is that whilst you are doing this, you have to make sure that all the logos here are properly aligned because alignment is key. You have to make sure that all your elements has been aligned. This makes your design looks very professional. And another key tip here is that anytime you are doing a design and you are placing logos, make sure that the size looks consistent and it looks proportionate don't if you are using an earlier version of photoshop which is a cc 2017 2015 make sure you hold a shift key to constrain to the proportion so i have to make sure that the size looks proportionate and this is where you you just use your eye or you can use the ruler make sure the ruler is on and you can just make sure one of the logos doesn't look bigger than the other make sure in in respect to their proportion it looks one doesn't look bigger than the other So once this is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this control G into group and just place that here. And I'm going to increase this a little bit. All right. So now I have a feeling that 
the Apple logo looks a little bit too big in respect to the other. So I'm going to select the Apple logo and make it a little bit smaller. And one key tip, also make sure that the spacing between logos, whenever you are aligning, aligning logos like this, they are consistent. So you have to pay attention to that too. All right, so once you have that done, we are done bringing in our logos and I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at the contact section of our billboard design, which is adding the contact icons. So quickly back into our design, I just want to fix something here that currently this is how it looks like. And I want you to select the laptop service center with a Let's change the color with a T key to activate the type two, and let's change this to this color just for contrast to make it stand out. So back here, we're going to add icons to this, and I have the icons prepared. So we have the call icon, which is this, and the WhatsApp icon. Select both, and let's drag both into our working document. Press Enter twice to place the two icons. So the WhatsApp should be here and the contact should be here as the call icon should be here so the next thing is um, let's first of all change the color of this to white so with the fx color overlay and we want the color to be white so in the color overlay make sure that the blend mode is set to normal and you click here to bring out the color picker dialog box choose white okay and let's just drag the FX onto the WhatsApp icon. Again, let's make sure that the color, let's make sure the icons looks consistent. It, it, it's not that big and one is not bigger than the other. So to, to ensure that they look consistent, I'm just going to put this on top of this. And so in design, one of the key principles is make sure that all your elements especially if they are related, they look very consistent. So to finish off with the contact section, what we are going to do, we are going to add a shape underneath this just to give it that sort of attention and visual interest. And I was thinking about shape to use and there was no other shape than a polygon. So to use a polygonal shape beneath this, you go to the shape panel, right click, and choose the polygon tool. And the polygon we are going to use is a hexagon, a six sided. So over here is choose six and you draw a hexagon. Make sure that the edges, that the pointed edges is facing up like this. And if you are new to this, just play with it several times and you should be able to get it on the third or on the second time. So at this section, all we have to do is just put this hexagon beneath this. We have it here. And what I'm thinking we should do is we have to create a gradient. So we are going to add a gradient of this color and this color. So with the, with the polygon selected, go to FX, gradient overlay, and with a gradient overlay, click on the gradient editor to bring out the gradient editor dialog box. And select, click on this, double click on this editor, select this. Okay, double click on this. Make sure you are targeting this editor. If you don't see this, by the way, if you don't see this, you make sure you have the first gradient selected. Double click on this. Select this, click OK. So right now, what we have to do is we have to make sure, click OK, we have to make sure that the angle of the gradient is the way we want it. So over here, I'm going to set it to zero. I'm going to inverse it. This is how I want it. And I'm going to add a stroke to it, a white stroke, just to make it stand out. So I think this looks cool. Then we are done with our shape for our icon. Duplicate this over here. 
make sure that the WhatsApp icon is right in the center of this. Just in decrease the size a little bit. All right, so what I was doing here, it was just nudging the text to make sure that it feels right. So at this point, this is how the design, let me zoom out so that we can see how the design is looking like. So I don't like the fact that the stroke is too bold. So what you're going to do is so by selecting this, let me make this seven so that the stroke it's a little bit less and I'm going to hold the alt key and drag it onto the second stroke. So with that, that is it. At this point, I think we're pretty much done with dealing with the contact section of our design. I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at adding social media icons. Let's dive right in. So in Photoshop, you can see that our design is pretty much, we are getting to our final design. So we're going to add the social media icons here. So this, basically I put it here for the social media. And I feel this should be a banner just to kind of create a contrast in the typeface. So anytime you're designing, at least use two typeface. One typeface is a little bit, a little bit, a little bit boring. So you always want to try and use two typeface. I'm going to change this to a banner. And I'm going to make it all caps with a crater panel, space it out a little bit. So this is where I want the social icon to be. So in the project files, just go to the project files and I have this social icon. I got, I didn't create this from scratch. I got it online. So sometimes you can just use Google search to get free icons to use for your design. So I'm going to put this here. Just in, decrease the size of this. So by pressing control plus, I zoom in. And just put that here. And one thing that I want you to pay attention to at this point is you can see that I'm zooming in. I have to make sure that Everything here is aligned. So by selecting the two, I can use the, making sure that I have all the elements aligned vertical centers. So that is all for adding the social icons to our design. See you in the next lecture. Pretty much done with our design. In this lecture, we're going to look at kind of finishing the filter section of our design. We're going to fix some alignment issues and we're going to look at the location section. So here, what I'm going to do is I'll make this all caps, then increase the tracking of this to 25. Then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So first off, use the show channel control and increase the size of this the location itself. Then by selecting the location, I have to make sure I have selected and to make this look nicer, I'm going to add a shape beneath this. So you select the rectangle tool and add a rectangle shape beneath this. Just create a rectangle shape, put it beneath this. Control T to activate the transform control with the rectangle shape selected, right click, increase perspective and we just want to align this so that our design will have the same flow to this. And 
I think we have to make this a different color, which is, should be using red. Select the location. I'm going to add this to it. I'm going to change the color to white. I'm not mentioning all these because I, I will I assume by now you should know how to do all this. So with this done, I'm going to increase the size of the location a little bit so that it stands out more. All right. So with this done, I think we are done with the location. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the shape and the location text itself in the layers panel by holding the shift key and selecting both. Then I'm going to group it with Control J and I'm going to name this location. Click on the show transform control and increase the size of this a little bit. Our goal here is to make it stand out. So this is the location. In the footer, we want to show the computer accessories to be here. So we have some text here that's a hinge repairs. I think this should be here. Keyboard replacement. This should be here. But I'm going to indent it. Center. And screen replacement. I think this should also need to make sure that I put this here so that I don't select the wrong text. So now what I want us to do is select the three text and change, decrease the font size. I'm going to reduce the font size and change the, the color of the text together. So to change the color of the text, you press the T key to activate the type tool, click, select, sample this white, and the color will be selected. And you can control the leading. So now the text, looking here, the leading is a little bit too much, and the text is 227. So we're going to make the leading also 227 just to close it up a little bit. So the same here, the same here. All right, so I think with this done, our design is pretty much taking shape and we are almost done. So I forgot one text which I, I didn't add which I can easily do by just dragging this, holding the, um, my hands are on the Alt key, uh, holding it, and I'm going to put, so you put here sales of computer accessories. Sales of computer accessories. And our goal here is to make sure that this is aligned center with the logo so make sure it's aligned centrally with the logo that is all for the creating of the footer section like finalizing of the footer section i'll see you in the next lecture in this lecture we're going to look at adding texture to the background of our design and the importance of texture is to give the design some sort of a look and feel so we're going to add this texture we're going to Add a little bit of that to this section and to that, this section just to give that design that textured feel. So in Photoshop, see, we're going to add the texture here and here. So first of all, we have to make sure that we have the last layer selected. So it's going to come on top of this. So in the project files, I have prepared, I have the texture here. So which is the wood texture, just drag it and put it into Photoshop. You increase the size of this texture. Once we have it here, we have
have to lower the opacity of this so that it doesn't become too strong so what i'm going for is 45 and obviously you can play with it that one is up to you so at this section let me zoom in i don't really see the texture here So I need to make sure that I can, I'm seeing the texture. So I can either control it. So now I'm seeing this a little bit. So I'm going to leave it to 45 for all so that it will have that kind of consistent look and feel. I don't have to change the texture. So guys, that is all for the adding of the texture to the background. I'll see you in the next lecture. Hey, welcome to this lecture where we're going to create another variation of our design. What I thought was that this looks too clumsy. So let me make it a little bit simpler. So by selecting the artboard, so this is how to duplicate an artboard. By selecting the artboard, I hold the Alt key and I duplicate this make sure none of your layers are locked if any of your layers are locked this will not work and once i have it duplicated what i am going to do i'm going to delete this part of the uh, design so with this the little thing i'm going to make is i'm going to bring this here to the left here and increase select the direct selection tool drag around the edges and just push this to the end, make sure, making sure our image has a lot of room. Increase the size of this. So by increasing, increasing the size of this, we have much room. And always when you're doing a design, try and after you are done designing, create another variation of the design. Because sometimes you think you are done unless you ask yourself, how can I make this better? So by asking that question, how can I make this better? And just play with the layout of the design. You see a lot of magic happens. Most of the time, that's what happens to me. So let me, let's go back to our previous design we i just want to add this gradients to our this section of our design so i'm going to copy this gradients copy layer star and go just paste it here and right right here what i have to do is just go back into double click and what i want to do is i want to reverse this this time around so this is how I want it to be and click OK. So this is what I want here. I'm going to copy this, right click and copy layer star. Put it on this, select it on there. Our duplicated design and paste it right here. All right. So I am also seeing something here that the space between this and this is too tight. So just loosen it up a little bit. The space between this and this is too tight. So loosen it up a little bit. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a more simpler version of our design. How by deleting, I deleted this image and I just want to work with this a simple layout like this so with this this gives us the another opportunity to make the headline bigger so i'm talking about this headline let's make it bigger let me select all this and with the shift key that is what i'm, I'm using if you hold the shift key, you can select multiple layers. And I've increased the size of this. Let's 
push this here all right so this is another alternative another version of our design so with this what i want to do is instead of putting this here i think what i have to do was i have to group this Control J to group, and I'm going to name it Sales of Laptop. And select these two Control J to group, and name it Repairs, Repair of Laptop. And I'm going to push that here. So what I'm going to do is instead of worrying myself with this text, I'm going to actually delete this. So there's a duplicate here. I also delete this. And these logos, I'm going to select the group. So let me just name it logos. So always remember to rename your layers. It helps, it helps, gives you that chance to streamline. So rename the group. And let me show you one cool trick here that you can always use whenever you are designing. So first off, before I show you that, let me minimize these logos because I want to put that here. So minimize these logos. And I'm going to change, this is the cool trick. I'm going to change the blending mode of this to multiply. And also, let me try darken. So this, if the, logos, the logo has any white background, it will immediately remove the white background from the logo. Now, what I'm seeing here is that I think this shape needs a little bit of more space. So I'll, 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 do, I'll increase this, this, the height of this shape a little bit. So what that means is that um, I have to bring the logo here. and delete this text. So remember, this is just another variation of our design. Delete this text. So instead of putting the logos here, you're going to put just the company logo here. And you're going to make this big like it was before. Put this on top like this. And I have to make sure that the social media section is rightly placed. So what this means is that we also have to decrease the size of the location. So all that I'm doing is just tweaking adjustments doing some a little bit of adjustment to our design. I'm going to lower the size of this text. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this here. Put this here. And I'm going to hold the Alt key and duplicate it one more time. And instead of sales of laptop, let's say I'm going to make it sales of iPhones. They also sell phones, or sales of iPhones. So 
just going to create a little bit of space for this by nudging this up a little bit and selecting the logo reference shapes so make sure you have both shapes selected and you nudge it up so what this gives is this gives us an opportunity to select these shapes that we just created so just push it up a little bit and i'm going to just group this control a to select all and center this all right so this is also another version of our design that is all for creating another version of our design i'll see you in the next lecture almost done with our project this project in this lecture i'm going to look at exporting adports in png now that our design is pretty much done to export this artboard you go to file export and export as and the reason why we are using the export as dialog box is because this gives us the opportunity to, to export it as different sizes and this design will be printed but before we print it you want to send it to the client to see it first so if you want to know how to prepare your design for prints i have another course on how to create a billboard i'll leave a link in the description that will show you how to do that or you can just go to get good at designs and browse our courses and that you will see other billboard course which i showed you how to prepare your design for print so with this the format should be png you can also choose jpeg but i'm going for png and i'm going to export it you click on export all you give it a location like my desktop select and it's going to export your design so that is all for exporting the design in png i'll see you in our final lecture which will be how to create a mock-up for a client to see now that we are done exporting our design i'm going to create a mock-up in a project files i have a mock-up template that i downloaded and you can use it like a free mock-up tool once you open that in photoshop it is very easy to place your design in so make sure that is open and this is what you see i even have the design in already so once you open the mock-up what you see is you see you can place your design here so i'm going to go to the design that we just did i'm going to select let's say the first version put it here select the first version and put it on it and once you place it on it all you have to do is turn the other layers off and just save it and it's going to save and once it's done saving you close it and your design should be in here so all that you have to do is you save it again so you go to you can use the shortcut key Control shift alt s or if you like analog way you can use export export for web so you alt shift Control s that is shortcut key for export for web and with the export for web dialog box you go to optimize and choose png24 that is what i want i normally use internet standard rgb be a cubic sharper save and you give the location you save it like version one or two and that is all for like creating a mock-up and saving it so guys that is all for this project and i know this is a little bit longer this project is not for absolute beginners if you are a beginner you probably learn some few tips here that you can apply in your but i will encourage you to watch my beginner courses like photoshop beginner courses on getting started in graphic design let me know if you have any questions until next time i will see you bye don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like and share this video if you find this content valuable and thank you so much for doing that in advance i'll see you guys bye